New insights on mechanisms of Foley macrophage induction and persistence. Hi, my name is Marion Laderoot and I'm lab director at Immune System Management Clinic and Lab in Ottawa. Atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries initiates with foaming macrophages as shown here. Human macrophages undergo spontaneous bone cell formation without the need for lipid or toll-like receptor signaling. This is a paper by Kiel et al. published in 2012 in which he describes that M1 human monocyte derived macrophages undergo spontaneous foam cell formation when the cells are cultured in DMEM. Spontaneous foam cell formation is not found in murine systems nor in human monocyte leukemic cell lines which instead requires oxidative LDL and or tolic receptor signaling. Foamy macrophages have been described in association with tumors and viral infections. On the left, we see a lymph node adjacent to a tumor where we can clear clearly see these foamy macrophages. And in brain sections, with reactivated John Cunningham virus is given on the right. So what causes foamy macrophages in humans? If you culture human core blood, normal core blood mononuclear cells, in IMDM media instead of RPMI, you will get the induction of these foamy macrophages. So if you look by EM, you'll see highly vacuolated cells that look foamy. And inside all of these vacuoles are these 100 nanometer particles, immature particles with envelope spikes. And none, none of these viruses appear to uh, be released through the cell surface membrane. Release seems to be only through cell lysis. One cause of a certain type of foamy macrophage appears to be the induction of an endogenous foamy retrovirus. So what are these HERVs, the human endogenous retroviruses? Well, 8% of the human genome involves HERVs. They are named according to the amino acid transfer RNA used for, for reverse priming for integration into the host genome. HERVK, HML2 proviruses are the most recent and the most biologically active group. Antibodies to HERVK antigens have been found in many diseases. The foaming retrovirus of humans has not been discovered, but most mammals have their own foaming retroviruses. So we proceeded to identify what this virus was, and we identified it as HERVK102 as described in this slide. In, in photo A, we see the foamy macrophages by H&E stain. In B is the transmission electron microscopy picture of the foamy macrophages. And in C, we see the, these, these uh, particles inside all the vacuoles. So what we did was we designed primers for HML2 Paul and found that it w became expressed when the cells were cultured. Here, the cell in the cells it peaked on day five because on day seven the cells underwent lysis with the release of particles so the mRNA is actually less and at the end of that in D at the end of the first image you'll see there's DNA also with the same signal which implies that it is found in the human genome so what we do, did was we took day five from six out of six core blood samples we excised it and sequenced it and found only HERF-K102 Paul sequences. Later on, we developed a real-time PCR methodology and was able to confirm that it was HERF-K102 Paul RNA that becomes very highly expressed over the seven days of culture. It's important for a foamy virus to have the envelope expressed for infectivity as well as uh, processing of the envelope. So the expression is shown on the left side by immunohistology and in A at the top you'll see that there's no expression of, of any antigen. The last one is uh, anti-lymphocyte globulin or positive control. 
and with the ML4 and ML5 rabbit antibodies to envelope peptides you see we get strong expression particularly in the foamy cells. By western blotting from immunoprecipitated materials we see we do detect a 90 and a 55 KD antigen corresponding to envelope being uh, the, the higher one being not processed and the lower one being processed. So we, we were able to confirm that envelope was expressed, HERP-K102 envelope was expressed and was processed as would be expected. So we then looked at um, to see whether we can isolate these particles from human samples and uh, in lane one is just a, a spike control to show that we, c we can detect a beta actin DNA if you um, put in about 500,000 uh, PBMC samples into the uh, sample. But w what we showed here was that the RNA, the, although we could detect RNA sometimes, we always got DNA in the particles that were isolated from plasma. And these are three different kinds of diseases, chronic fatigue syndrome, acute EBV infection, as well as multiple sclerosis, initial diagnosis and with progression. We also detected it in core blood samples, uh, for, uh, two out of four samples. Now in the disease patients, when they, these people went into remission, these particles were no longer detected. So this shows that we have what's probably a foamy virus because the genomes are predominantly DNA. So we looked for uh, responses to viral infections because we were in fact at the time we were Bloodborne Pathogens Division at the Public Health Agency of Canada. So in the normal we did see 1 out of 30 uh, with a very 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 weak uh, reactivity by ELISA and uh, here we're showing that we could we we got one that was just marginally elevated over 1.62 which was 1.74 but in the hepatitis B and C we got lots that were well over um, the normal range and herpes virus is 61 percent and in HIV we got about 75 percent uh, positive for the HERF-K particles. But here the the levels were the maximum levels were seven fold seven log fold lower than we found for other bloodborne pathogens, suggesting that HIV may antagonize HERF-K 102 particle production. So when we looked to see if um, there was any evidence for a role of HERF-K particles in protection against HIV transmission, we found evidence of a five-fold increased genomic copies in the HESN commercial sex trade workers. Now HESN stands for HIV exposed seronegative individuals. Whereas the the HIV patients, whether or not they were on therapy T or not on therapy NT, they were not different from normal but only the uh, HESN were, had, had higher levels of integrated integrations. So this confirms HERF-K102 is likely replication competent and or infectious in vivo and HERF-K102 particle production activity might antagonize HIV replication and transmission. So the summary HERF-K102 has hallmark features and genetic motifs of non-pathogenic foamy viruses. Is replication competent reaching 10 to the 11th particles per mil of plasma in just a few days? Data not shown. HERF-K102 is unique to humans, not found in other species. And accumulating evidence suggests HERF-K102 is protective and may be an, an inflammatory innate immunity response to viruses tumors, toxins, and or stress, and may also induce autoimmune reactivity, T and B cell responses, against abnormal cells. These are cells that are tumor transformed or infected with viruses, which express HERF-K antigens. 
PERF-K102 has two GREs, glucocorticoid response elements, and thus likely is directly induced by cortisol. So here's our working model for foaming macrophage persistence in atherosclerosis. So you have these viruses, tumors, toxins, or stress that induces HERF-K102 particle production, which creates the foamy macrophages. Then on day seven, you get lysis, and this allows the release of the HERF-K102 particles, and this then allows for pathogen or tumor clearance or control. However, in the immunosuppressed host, there is blocked lysis, which then leads to atherosclerosis or persistence of the foaming macrophages. Now in the clinic, what we do is we reverse this by using flavonoids in our aminomics therapeutics. So this is how we promote wellness in, in clients with chronic diseases. Now, flavonoids are known to reduce cardiovascular risks and may protect against cardiovascular disease, as has been shown for the following. And it may lead to normalization of the DHEA cortisol ratio, as well as rebalance immunoreactivity, favoring TH1 over TH2, associated with a decline in IL-6. So in summary, the induction of foaming macrophages can be a normal host inflammatory response involving particle production of an endogenous foamy virus identified as HERF-K102 in response to intracellular pathogens and or tumors. However, foamy macrophage persistence and resulting atherosclerosis might signify active immunosuppression, stress, and or persistent pathogens which should be eliminated or treated and not necessarily high cholesterol per se. For more details on the endogenous foamy virus theory of foamy macrophage accumulation, see Why is February Heart Month, which is available on our website. Thank you very much.